Hey, how you guys doing? Today, we're gonna talk about power delivery on the whiteboard. Whiteboard series, probably, I think this one's number five. Um, a lot of you guys said you can't see the green marker, so the green marker is gonna get retired for the time being. But today, we're gonna talk about power delivery on boosted applications. So we're gonna go with um, Positive displacement blower. I know that's kind of like an oxymoron. They're all positive displacement, but let's just talk about a roots uh, TVS or um, twin screw stout supercharger. So blower, right? We're going to talk about, uh, uh, let's say, TVS, Whipple, Kenny Bell. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Kenny Bell. Edelbrock. And we're going to talk a centrifugal, which is still a supercharger, but it's the power delivery is totally different. Sentry. This is your Vortec, Vortec, Paxton, ESS, Pro Charger. Okay. Then we're talking turbo stuff, but we're not going to get too crazy on the turbo stuff. So a lot of people, when they're driving their naturally aspirated Mustang, especially Coyote Mustang, the car has a bit of a pep to it that you're used to it when it's naturally aspirated. Stock manifolds, stock cams, stock exhaust manifolds. It feels pretty peppy. It has good torque and it feels really nice. Well, what happens when you install, let's start with centrifugal here. What happens when you install centrifugal supercharger on the car? Well, when you look in a dyno log, okay, a dyno log will show you that the horsepower curve, let's say this is a dyno graph. And what you're gonna see is a centrifugal, let's say if it makes 600, and let's say this is 400, let's say this is zero and 200, which doesn't really happen. You're gonna see a pow some power delivery be very kind of linear and goes up like that. And with the more RPM you see with the centrifugal, typically the more power you make. But torque kind of tends to do this. Okay, and then it come, comes down or something like that. Similar, so your torque at let's say, let's say this is 1500, 2000, 3,000, 4,000, let's just say this is seven, right, right, whatever. So 15, two, you start to run at three, whatever. You're gonna see that torque is gonna be a little delayed and you're not really gonna start feeling much, if at all, actually on centrifugals, probably closer to 5,000 RPMs. You're really not gonna feel that much oomph when you go wide open throttle with a centrifugal, this is horsepower. Again, it is meant to be a high RPM power delivery. So this is really good in my opinion if you're road racing, if you're um, roll racing and road racing, where you're always in the high RPMs, where you're seeing the most amount of torque and horsepower because torque gets you there, horsepower keeps you there and typically that's what you want so a lot of people are amazed and surprised that it feels really real, real laggy with a centrifugal because they leave the light at 1500 rpm shift at 2500 rpm and this sucker is not even spinning fast enough to make any difference and you're like i thought when i put a supercharger in my mustang it was gonna feel zippier well, it will at really high RPM if it's a centrifugal supercharger, okay? So this is what a centrifugal supercharger generally does when it comes to power delivery. High RPM, low torque at low RPMs, feels really good above 5,000 and really, really good above 6,000. It really, really feels nice. So let's say you don't roll race, you don't road race, you don't do any of those things. So if you daily drive the car and you live under 4,000 RPMs, a centrifugal is not for you. 
It's just not for you. Now let's concentrate on blower. So we're gonna look at TVS, Whipple, Kenny Bell, any of these guys. In my opinion, very similar power delivery. I favor the TVS because the TVS just hits harder. I don't care what anybody says. Data proves it, everything proves it. But Whipple, Kenny Bell, Edelbrock is also a TVS. Whipple and Kenny Bell make really good high RPM horsepower, but generally, horsepower is similar. Let's say you're pulling for the same amount of boost, right? And this thing is really getting after it, and it's making about 600 or so over 7,000 RPMs. 7K. Okay, boom, boom, boom. But what does torque look like on a positive displacement blower? It looks like this. Then it drops probably more so drops a little sooner. But in the meat of it, when you're driving around takeoff from a light at 2000 plus RPMs, this sucker is torquey. This sucker has tons of torque. So if you're looking at a torque graph and you're, let's say you have torque over here, and let's say this is um, 200, 400, 500, 600 torque. Okay, boom, 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 boom. You're gonna see that this sucker gives you almost all of the torque you, you really are gonna have faster. So this feels zippier. So what's one of the biggest complaints I get? Why can't you make a centrifugal feel like a TVS, Whipple, Kenny Bell, or Edelbrock? One is basically a belt-driven turbo. The other are two rotors on top of the cylinder heads, forcing the air down instantly. Not whipping up, going through an intercooler, going through a throttle body, going through a manifold, going to the cylinder heads. The rotors on top of the engine, huh, here it is, ha! So I really under, don't understand that people choose a centrifugal and want the power delivery of a top mount blower like a TVS, Whipple, Kenny, Kenny Bell, or whatever. So you know what centrifugal guys do? They do something so stupid, it blows my mind, and I'm blown away that people even do this. What they do is, they overboost their centrifugal to mimic the power delivery of a TVS. Why don't you just get a TVS or a Whipple? If you're gonna drive around and hover at two to 5,000 RPMs in daily driving situations. So you want zippy feeling car, fourth gear, 2,000 RPMs, just floor it. It's gonna go. It's gonna go. You're gonna have the torque. But some people with centrifugals do the really most crazy thing, in my opinion. They get a thing called a torque booster. So a torque booster is basically an overdrive. So if your balancer is like this stock, well, you get one that's bigger so that it's spinning the uh, supercharger pulley faster. But what you do is you put a pipe somewhere between the blower and the engine and it has like a 10 pound springs on a wastegate and it wastegates any additional boost this might cause so that nothing more than 10 PSI originally, like you had originally, peak goes into the motor. So the torque curve on a centrifugal with a torque booster, torque booster, supercharger, and this is OG balancer, mimics more of, this is horsepower, and then torque is gonna look a little better, but still not exactly, let's say it's a little sooner, right? And then it trails off. So it's still not like with a Kenny Bell or a uh, Whipple or TVS style where that sucker, like the blue line is what a Kenny Bell torque curve would look like. It would look more flat than trail off. But some people just for whatever reason, they want the centrifugal to perform like a top mount supercharger. And I say, what do you want to do with the car? Do you want to daily drive the car? Yes. 
do you live above 7,000 RPMs constantly? No. VMP, Whipple, Kenny Bell, or Edelbrock, any of them at 10 PSI are gonna feel 10 times better driving around than any centrifugal. Do you race? Do you roll race? Do you road race? And do you live above 5,000 RPMs? Yes, centrifugal or even turbo. Actually, turbo, in my opinion, is the best of both worlds. Turbo, in my opinion, is the best of both, but we're not gonna go there. We're talking supercharger power delivery. Turbo is a completely different, I could take, I could have 20 videos on turbo stuff, but I will bore you to death because it is highly technical, but I'm giving you a very generic way of choosing how you want your power to be delivered. Instant power, blower, TV, like a TVS, a VMP, a Whipple, period, end of sentence. High RPM power, centrifugal. I loved my ESS kit in my Mustang, why? Because I drove it and I lived above three or 4,000 RPMs. I shifted high, I roll raced with it, I daily drove with it and didn't need the extra torque because it felt fine down low and if I wanted to get after it, I just rev it higher. But for some reason people get a centrifugal at 10 PSI and hate the fact that it feels lazy at low RPM. So choose your power adder wisely. If you're racing above five, 6,000 RPMs, I, I really love centrifugals. If you live above 5,000 RPMs in daily driving situations, centrifugals are badass. For automatic cars, you wanna get out of the hole or if you want more torque, there nothing beats these guys up here. And all be all, at the end of the day, it really is turbo, but in my opinion, on a daily driving situation and you like maintenance, go ahead and get yourself a turbo. All right, guys, that'll be, uh, I think, number five or number four. Who knows what Whiteboard Series episode this is, but thanks for listening. We'll talk to you later.